Welcome back to Aero 3170, Aviation Safety. Presentation number 11 on textbook chapter 11 concerning safety data. It's important to understand the nature of the data that you're looking at and which data is the best data to use to make an accurate comparison of uh, safety levels. Why are commercial aviation fatality rates a poor indicator of safety levels? Well, just one accident of a commercial jet can result in hundreds of deaths. So a single accident can greatly influence the uh, fatality rates for commercial aviation. So what data would be best as an indicator of commercial aviation safety? Accident rates are a much better indicator uh, because the number of fatalities for different types of accidents can vary widely. When looking at accident and fatality rates, it's important to understand the exposure data. It's important to understand the exposure data because it's used to calculate the accident fatality rates. Exposure data includes uh, cycles, distance, passenger departures, or flight hours. So exposure data is used as the denominator when you're calculating an accident or a fatality rate. And it's important to compare rates with the same units of exposure. If you use different units of exposure, it would be very misleading. For example, comparing fatalities per departure in one year to fatalities uh, per flight hour in another year would be very misleading. The most appropriate exposure rate when comparing commercial aviation to other modes of transportation would be passenger miles. Uh, comparing passenger miles is most appropriate uh, in comparing commercial aviation safety to other modes of transportation because it allows for broad-based system comparisons. So how are passenger miles calculated? Passenger miles are calculated by multiplying the number of passengers by the number of miles traveled. So 100 passengers who traveled 1,000 miles would equal 100,000 passenger miles. So why aren't accident counts alone a reliable measure of safety in air transportation? Well, there aren't enough accidents in commercial aviation to make this a, a useful statistic. An airline with a larger fleet will also have more accidents and aircraft models uh, that are flown more often would have more accidents as well. What data would be the most valid indicator of relative safety in commercial aviation? Accident rates would be the most valid indicator of relative safety. An accident rate would be the number of accidents divided by some common denominator, such as flight hours. If we are interested in non-fatal occupational illnesses and injuries in the U.S., the best agency for that data would be the Bureau of Labor Statistics, or BLS. Uh, BLS, in cooperation with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, and state governments use surveys to collect data about non-fatal work-related injuries and, and illnesses. So in the recent past, What's happened to the number of occupational injuries in the transportation sector? Well, the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, have data that indicates that work-related injuries have declined in the transportation industry. But the data also indicates that the transportation industry has the most work-related fatalities of any other industry. In Chapter 11 of the textbook, there is some safety data uh, that uh, Boeing published about fatalities between 1959 and 2015. These graphs show data about accident rates and fatalities by year, accidents and onboard fatalities by phase of flight, and accidents or, or fatalities by accident categories. According to these statistics, what type of accident accounted for the most fatalities between 1959 and 2015? Well, according to Boeing, 
the accident category that accounted for the most fatalities between those years was loss of control in flight. The type of accident that accounted for the second most fatalities between 1959 and 2015 was CFIT, or Controlled Flight into Terrain. Boeing also looked at statistics concerning uh, commercial jet hull loss accidents and the primary causes for those accidents. And they found that the primary cause between 1959 and 2015 uh, was the flight crew. Approximately 70% of all commercial hull loss accidents between those years were caused by the flight crew or human error. These statistics from Boeing also look at the trend over the last 40 years. And they found that there was a steady decrease in hull losses in the last 40 years. But what has occurred in the last two decades? Well, hull losses have actually leveled off at a relatively low rate. But what will happen in the future if the rate remains the same? Well, the number of hull losses will increase due to the growing fleet and the uh, increasing number of departures. The Boeing data also looks at the number of accidents uh, during each phase of flight. So what phase of flight has the most exposure to accidents and which phase of flight do most accidents occur? Remember those are two different statistics. Well the highest exposure time for an accident occurs during cruise flight. Cruise flight accounts for 57% uh, of total flight time. But final approach and landing accounts for 48% of all fatal accidents. Now the NTSB is the primary source of data concerning accidents in the United States. So anyone interested in data concerning commercial aviation accident rates uh, can go to the NTSB website for that type of data. But it's important to remember that the NTSB uses a very broad definition of an accident due to their broad definition of an accident, the United States, according to their statistics, experiences about 36 accidents a year involving scheduled and unscheduled air service. Serious accidents involving fatalities, though, are rare. So what are some of the lessons that we can learn from the Boeing statistics? What continues to be the major challenge facing the airline industry for safety? And based on the top three accent categories and the most dangerous phases of flight, what recommendations would you make to improve airline safety? Again, to review, according to the Boeing statistics, the accident category that accounted for the most fatalities between 1959 and 2015 was loss of control in flight. The second most fatalities was caused by CFIT, or controlled flight into terrain. And 70% of all commercial jet hull loss accidents were caused by human error, or primarily caused by the flight crew. Even though commercial jet hull losses have decreased in the last two decades, if we don't reduce the accident rate, the number of accidents will increase. The number of commercial hull losses will increase because of the growing fleet and the growing number of departures. So the question remains, how will we reduce the rate of accidents in order to prevent the number of accidents from going up? Well, again, 48% of all fatal accidents occurred during final approach and landing, even though cruise flight accounts for 57% of flight time. So with all of that in mind, what continues to be the major challenge facing airline safety management? And looking at the Boeing data, uh, it looks like human factors, uh, pilot error, 
is the major challenge. Based on the top three accident categories and the most dangerous phases of flight, what recommendations can we make to improve airline safety? We'll continue to discuss this in class. That's the end of chapter 11, uh, presentation 11 on safety data. The next presentation will be on managing safety.